this one I'm going to share very quickly because it's not something which um, which is an easy one to talk about, which is what we're ultimately wanting for our children is for them to have an experience of the world in which they can make meaning of the world against their internal value system. So what I mean by that is we want them, we're going to hope that in this period of time until they probably, let's say at least 16, we're going to give them a value system which they're going to own inside of them, which they're going to then measure up the world against. So what I'm referring to that is if you believe that stealing something is inappropriate, in other words, your value is that we respect each other's properties, then you're going to hope that that value is so entrenched in your child that when they get to 16, 18, 40, 50, they're going to have such a strong drive to be honest and not to steal, right? Because between now and 16 or between now and 18, maybe you've got some degree of control over if they steal or not steal and influence of drumming that into them or not. When they're 25, 30, 40, you basically have let them go and you're now hoping that you've done a good job, right? That's our, one of our biggest wishes is to have inculcated, nurtured, grown a conscience in our children, which is going to be so super strong that whenever they come up with any decision, they're going to do what is appropriate and right for them, whatever that means for them, right? Because at some point, they're going to own, that was take a stand on their own belief system and start to realize that the one that you gave them might not work sufficiently for them. Now, as much as as you believe you're imparting your belief systems, your religion onto your child, there's going to come a time at which they can realize that they don't have to follow it because you're no longer that, that be all the end all in their life. <coughs> and they're going to make up what works for them. They're going, to, they're going to decide for themselves. And you're going to wish that you've done a good enough job that the values that you've imparted, which are so important to you, are also theirs because obviously that's meaningful to you whether it is your religious belief or whether it is the human values that you have, whatever it is, it's the realization that there's going to come a time when they might not choose to follow what you are following, even though at this stage in life they're doing it because they're actually not even aware that there are other options to choose from or that actually they even have a choice. You go to Sunday school and that's the way it is. There is this thing called God and that's the way it is. And there's no other in between until they start realizing that maybe there are, maybe there are other things out there and then they might realize at some point that they have a choice, which is exactly independence, right? that autonomy. Again, it's how do we give our children the, that ability to have a conscience which is going to be the benchmark against which they decide, is this good or bad for them? Is this going to give me the results or not? Right. So the question we've got to ask is, well, how do we support our children in developing a conscience that's going to most hopefully be in alignment with what our values are? Right? And what I'd like to share with you is, in my experience, what we're doing is we're giving children the experience of, of what I call a creative tension <coughs> of grappling with, is this right for them, is this wrong for them, am I getting the results or not, such that at some point they're going to choose to do something about it, as opposed to you telling them what to do about it. So I'm aware and can recall certain ages when I have stolen, both when I was probably seven, eight, nine, I can clearly remember, through to perhaps even maybe 14, 15, you know. And I'm also aware that at some point in my life, I made a decision, this is not okay for me. And it probably only happened in my late teens that that decision of stealing became something that was really valuable and important to me. And I'm aware that all those other instances, which are so clearly ingrained in my mind, of how I experienced those instances. So, for example, there's one scenario where um, I took some money from my dad's um, pocket bowl. The challenge was, and I'm talking I'm young now, probably eight years old, I don't know, I don't get pocket money, so how do I show that I've got money when I'm not given money? So I came up with a clever idea of, well, I'll pretend that I found it when we all went to go sailing. So there's a clubhouse, people change, of course, money's going to fall out. It's quite logical and reasonable, right? So look, I found some money. Everyone's like, oh, you're so lucky, fantastic. Off I go to the tuck shop, buy some sweets, come back, I'm a happy chappy. Of course, the next weekend when I did the same thing, 
it just kind of like stunk a bit, right? Hmm, something's going on here. And I saw the looks. Now, if my father or whoever else was around had gone and said, no, this doesn't sound right. Something's not, not going on. What happened? I'm just going to go straight into the defensive. I did find it. I promise. Why? Don't you believe me? You don't love me anymore. You can't, you know, you don't trust me. When are you going to, uh, there's this whole defensiveness, right? Just the fact that there were these questions and looks made me realize, oh, I'm treading a fine line here. What it did is it allowed for me to make a decision about, I'm not going to do that again because that was too close, right? But I made the decision. No one enforced it on me. Even though I stole a bit later at another time, all those together supported me in making a decision that this is, the value for me is I want to be honest. And I'm going to be honest. So if you're really wanting your child to have a conscience which is really strong, especially at the teenage years when they might be doing things which they don't want to do, right? You want them to have a super strong conscience, which isn't because you're threatening them, but it's because they're choosing what they're wanting for their life. And that's only going to come through them experiencing, one, taking responsibility. Now, the thing about taking responsibility is it's them saying, this is what I choose, not you telling them what they have to do. And that means that there are those opportunities where even though you know that they stole that or they're lying to you, you're not trying to prove to them that they stole it to lie. It's because they know that already, right? If they've stolen something, why do you want to go and prove to them that they've stolen it? Because they already know that. You're wasting your time. What you could do is ask kinds of questions that show that something doesn't seem right here. And what happens is they sit in there like, oh, this is not great. Oh, how do I answer that question? And then so they might start making up further lies or something. And you follow that and see where it goes. But what they're realizing is, hmm, something, this is what I call that, like, you know, the, um, uh, like the fire under the bum. I call it the creative tension. There's a sense of, of stuff churning. And that's what I want. Because out of the churning, the possibility exists for them to take a decision about it and to make it and say, right, actually, I did steal it. Or I did lie. Now that is immensely powerful when a person can stand in being responsible for what they've done. And that is what conscience is. I am going to make a decision and I am willing to stand in what the impact of that decision is and bear the consequences. And I still choose that even if I know what the consequences are going to be. That for me is conscience. 